Pouch is a simple to use mobile application that allows you to remit payments home to the Philippines from anywhere in the world simply, quickly, and cheaply. Today we're going to take a look at how to use the application and what it's capable of. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions and this is your daily session. Bitcoin. Before we dive in, quick shout out to sponsors of the show, hodlhodl.com. If you're buying Bitcoin and you have a few priorities in mind, like peer-to-peer -peer trading, instant self-custody, and no KYC, this is the place to be. You can sign up in minutes with nothing more than an email address. Simply scroll down, choose your currency, your payment method, and your amount, and start viewing offers right away. On top of this, they also have a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform in which nothing is ever rehypothecated. So you can check them out for all of that today at hodlhodl.com or just click on the link in the show notes. Now, when you do obtain some Bitcoin, you're gonna to wanna to secure it with some of the best hardware on the market and CoinKite, bar none, I think is, is the best option out there. I love everything they're doing. The cold card Mark IV is just so bang on when it comes to securing your stack. It's got, it can be simple to use, but you also have a ton of advanced features if you want to employ them. They also pump out a lot of other great things like the tap signer, the sats card, the block clock, the open dime, and coming really soon, the cold card Q1, which looks insane. So if you want to reserve that, or if you want to pick up any of the other stuff I mentioned, head to coinkite.com, use code BTC sessions for 5% off everything in the store. Now, if you're looking to go beyond just single SIG in securing your Bitcoin and you're diving into the realm of multi-SIG, Nunchuck.io has a great product called the Honey Badger uh, setup, and it's an assisted multi-SIG setup. They would hold one key and you would hold the rest of the key, so they never have control of your funds, but they can sign just in case you need some help. Uh, and it can all be set up very simply through your mobile device. It works with things like the tap signer and the cold card very simply, along with a whole bunch of other hardware options. Um, and it's very simple to use. On top of this, it has baked in inheritance planning. So you know that your Bitcoin will get to your next of kin without any fuss. And finally, one of my favorite things about it is it's no KYC. You're not required to divulge any personal information. You can sign up and use it with nothing more than an email address. And that really sets it apart from other options on the market. So check them out, nunchuck.io. And finally, start9.com, your sovereign computing solution. I love these guys. I love everything they're up to. They put out some incredible devices and their firmware, their OS, in which you can manage everything Bitcoin and your online uh, presence is barn on the best thing out there. Um, so you can set up your full Bitcoin uh, stack, Bitcoin Core, Lightning, Mempool.space, Join Market, a whole bunch of other tools. You can host your data, passwords, files, photos, all that stuff. You can even host Nostra Relays and Nostra Clients, all kinds of great stuff. And they just dropped a huge stack of new devices. They've got the Server Lite, the Server One, and the Server Pro. Each one um, I mean, the, you wouldn't find the hardware any cheaper than this if you built it yourself. Uh, and there's a little bit of something for everyone based on your needs. Uh, so be sure to check them out, start9.com. Again, love these guys, hats off to them. And with that, let's dive into the tutorial. So pouch.ph uh, is the website for this application. And of course, it's available on both Android and Apple. And so you can get this on your phone. It's a really simple to use application. And some people uh, watching this video may be completely unfamiliar with Bitcoin. And that's actually totally fine. You don't need to know anything about Bitcoin. What this application does is it just uses Bitcoin as a network so that you can cheaply transfer money cross-border in an instant uh, and have people have access to it in the Philippines and be able to do things like pay bills, transfer to bank accounts, get cash, top up their phone, get game credits, all kinds of different stuff, all from within the application. It's super easy to use. So effectively, we're gonna go through the process of what it's like to use this thing in practice. And um, if you're unfamiliar with Bitcoin, that's okay. 
we'll go through that here uh, and we'll we'll get you started so that you can begin remitting money home to the Philippines uh, with as little friction and cost as possible. Now, the first step other than downloading and setting up the app for yourself is also going to be if you're the individual that is uh, going to be remitting money home to the Philippines, then you basically just need to obtain Bitcoin somewhere. And there's a lot of different options depending on where you reside. In terms of where to obtain Bitcoin for somebody that wants to remit payments home, there's a lot of options out here. Uh, in Canada, Bull Bitcoin is a great option. Neutron Pay is another new option that is also great within Canada. Uh, if you're in the US, you can send it directly from Strike. So strike.me, you can check out them. It also works sending from Cash App, which is uh, used by a lot of people. In the UK, Coin Corner is a great option. Um, Bitaroo is in Australia. Australia, uh, Africa, there's Bitnob. And uh, I'm going to include this link that has a list of a whole bunch of different exchanges that uh, allow you to obtain Bitcoin and in particular use the Lightning Network, which you'll see in the app. And that's kind of the quick, cheap way to be able to send Bitcoin anywhere and uh, get you your remittances in the Philippines. The main takeaway here is as long as the person sending money to you in the Philippines has Bitcoin, they will be able to send it to your pouch wallet and you'll be able to use it seamlessly. The other thing I'll say here in terms of any prerequisite knowledge that you may need or that may be helpful in this situation is just a familiarity with sending Lightning Network payments. Again, you don't need to have that knowledge uh, because I will walk you through everything here. But if you want a little bit extra and you want to familiarize yourself with how Bitcoin can work with various apps and, and how to send it and receive it, I will link to any other app or any other wallet that we discuss in this video in the show notes down below. So if you see an application, you're like, I want to try that one as well. Just look in the show notes and you'll find a video link for that walking you through everything. So I'm going to start off this tutorial with my application already kind of signed in. And so I wanted to clarify upon getting the application, downloading it and starting it for the first time, it is going to ask for some information. It's going to ask for uh, your ID, uh, picture, a couple different things, basically just to verify who you are and, uh, and again, to stay in compliance with local laws and, and all that kind of stuff. It was a pretty easy process. Um, it, it didn't take a lot to, to get done, but just be aware, it'll ask you a few questions about yourself in, in the initial setup, um, less than you would have to do to get a bank account. Uh, and the whole thing is pretty streamlined. Uh, but we're going to be diving in now. Now, and you'll see mine is already set up good to go and uh, we'll we'll take it as if you've already done the same okay so let's just have an overview of the application what's in front of you um, now I've I've already gone through I've done some settings I've obviously done some transactions because I have a, a small balance here but um, more or less this will be the same layout for you uh, on the main screen you're gonna have your name you're gonna have a, an assigned net bank number here uh, you're also gonna have a balance which will obviously start as zero and it is denominated in the Philippine peso uh, in the top left there's a little notification bell that will show you any relevant notifications you may have and in the top right there's a little square in that out actually opens up your camera so that you can scan QR codes uh, which are used in in payment down at the bottom you have your send and receive buttons uh, so you can load this wallet or you can hit receive and receive from abroad um, and then down at the bottom you have all these tabs right now we're on the wallet tab which is right in front of us uh, there's a shop page and all of this has to do with what you can do with your balance once you have it. How do you actually use it? Well, there's a whole bunch of options and we'll go through them. Um, soon, you will have the ability to purchase Bitcoin in the Philippines directly from this app. That is a feature coming out eventually, but just know it will be there at some point or another. Um, then you have an activity tab. It shows any transfers and you can even uh, 
tap on individual uh, transfers that have happened to get further details. And then finally, you have your profile over on the right, and that will give you the opportunity if you want to put a picture there, you can. Um, it also gives you a link to a, a payment page where people can just send you payments whenever they like. Um, and it also gives you what is known as your lightning address, and that's also another method through which people can pay you. And then finally, in the profile section here in the top right, there's a little settings wheel. And and that's where you can go through and you can do things like managing your account, changing your password. Uh, you can add contacts. You can configure your tip page, um, just changing the messaging on it. Uh, you can add a, a pin code. You can change it to dark mode so you can see I've had mine change to dark mode, just my preference. You can set your local language and then just general frequently asked questions, contact information and the ability to sign out of the application. So that's an overview of everything here. We're gonna to get to it and uh, let's see first how we can receive money into the app. Okay, so there are a variety of different ways to receive money into your pouch wallet. Simply from the main screen, hit receive and it's gonna give you different options. And we're just gonna go through them one by one and see how they work. So the first thing you could do is you could create an invoice. So if I tap that option, it says, how many pesos would I like to receive? You can simply type an amount. Uh, if you wanna add a memo uh, and, and add any sort of note for yourself, you can do that. So I'll just put test and I'll hit confirm. And so I've already set up everything. I'm just gonna hit show QR code. And so what this is gonna bring up is an invoice that any person that was with me at the time could scan. And so if they had uh, literally any Bitcoin Lightning wallet, they would be able to scan this and send me funds, or if they were also using pouch or whatever. Um, however, I can also hit the copy button. And the copy button basically copies a string of digits that I can paste into a message and send to anybody and they will be able to send me funds. So let's see what that looks like in practice. Let's say somebody had a totally different uh, Bitcoin wallet and I'm gonna show you one, it's called Phoenix. This, you, you don't need to know how to use this, but somebody with Bitcoin would be able to go ahead, they'd be able to say, hey, I wanna send some money and then paste in the information you sent to them. And it would say, well, this is how much it is in Bitcoin or in USD or whatever their local currency is. They could hit pay and send it off and if I jump back, I can see that I've just been paid 10 Philippine pesos. I can go home and I can see my balance adjust upwards to show the incoming payment. It will also now show in my activity screen, hey, here's, here's uh, a 10 peso incoming transaction. It's already settled. It's already usable within the app. Uh, so nice and simple there. Easy way to be able to... Uh, send off a request for a payment to anyone. So let's take a look at what that might look like scanning a QR code if somebody were in front of me. So again, I'll, I'll hit receive. Um, I'm gonna say create invoice. I'll do the same thing. I'll do 10 pesos, I'll hit show QR code. And what I'm gonna do is I've actually got a wallet open on my computer right now. It's, it's built into the browser. It's called Albi, and I'll link that down below, as I said I would. Uh, but I'm gonna hit the send button here, and I'm gonna hit the scan button, this little square, and it will allow me to scan the QR code on my wallet, on my phone right now. And so you can see as I scan the QR code, it fills a bunch of information here in the wallet I'm using. I can hit continue and pay now and that should send off to pouch okay and we can see now in pouch that we have a successful payment we again have received 10 pesos we can go back home that'll be reflected in the balance it'll also show up in my activity as another incoming transaction now another way to receive is you can choose your pay link so your pay link is actually just a, 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 a page that somebody can navigate to uh, and they'll be able to actually uh, access that on the internet. So let's take a look at what that looks like in a browser on the computer.
So if you share that link, it takes you to a very simple screen where somebody can basically type in an amount that they want to send to you. Uh, they can leave a note and whatever that may be. And then they can say show QR code. And so this will then give them all the information that they need in order to send you money. They can either scan this or they can copy the information and paste it into a wallet. So again, if I, if I copy this and I go to my Albi wallet here and hit send, well, I can paste in that information and I can hit continue. And just as before, pay now, and that should go off in a jiffy. And there we go, we can see we received a payment and that will also reflect back in our wallet. I just saw that my balance ticked up by another 10 pesos. So uh, another instance, and this one is, is quite simple because the person sending, you don't have to designate the amount before they send it, they get to send it or set the amount themselves. Now we're not done with the various ways that you can send uh, somebody money within pouch. So on your profile page, there was also this email address looking thing, and this is actually called a lightning address, and it can be used by any individual to pay you directly. So mine is BTC sessions at pouch.ph, and anybody can type that in to a lightning wallet if they have it and send money there. So let's go ahead and do that in another wallet that I have. So this one is called Blink, and it's just another easy to use lightning wallet. I'm just gonna hit send, and I'm gonna, type in that uh, that email address or lightning address that we saw before. So BTC sessions at pouch.ph, I hit next. And it says, okay, well, you can send money there. That's nice and simple. All right, how much would you like to send? What from what account would you like to send? And then I can set the amount. And uh, just for this example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a very small amount. Um, about 30 cents US dollars worth. And I'm gonna set that amount, I'm gonna hit next. And then I'm gonna hit confirm payment. Okay, so that successfully sent off. And then back within pouch, we should see, yep, there we go. We added about 15 pesos as well. So our balance went up right again. And in activity, we see that coming in as well. Now, if you hit receive again, you'll also see something that says show BTC address. If you tap that, it shows another QR code that looks familiar, um, but the information down below is a little bit different. And this is called uh, a, a main chain address or a regular Bitcoin address. And this is not as practical for cheap and quick payments. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer to go through. Um, it does make sense for larger amounts in some cases, but you'll mostly be interacting with the Lightning Network, which is every example that we've shown so far. However, just again, as proof of concept, anybody could scan this with a regular Bitcoin wallet. And the reason you might use this as well is that if somebody has a wallet that doesn't have lightning, um, so they might use a regular Bitcoin wallet to scan this. Or again, you could copy this information and send it to anybody and they could then utilize that to send you money. So in the example here, this wallet does lightning and regular Bitcoin transactions. So I can hit send and I can paste that information in. It says, okay, yeah, you wanna send some money and I'm just gonna do this as an example. I'm not actually gonna send it, but this is about, $28 US. Okay. So when I hit prepare transaction, it's going to basically estimate what it's going to cost for me to send this. And it looks like it's going to cost about $2 and 36 cents US. And, you know, for sending, for sending $27, you know, that's a meaningful percentage of the total amount I'm sending. So in some instances, it may not make sense. But again, that is up to you and based on what wallet the sender and the receiver are using and if they're compatible. So just be aware, this is an option. I'm not going to send this way um, just because of the fee, but be aware that it's there for you to use. Now, the only other thing I'll note here is in the receive screen, you can tap cash in, and this actually allows you to cash in via your net bank account within the Philippines. All right. So if you want to add in cash uh, to your pouch wallet and then use it from there, 
this is the information you would need to do so. Um, I am not in the Philippines, so this is not useful for me as a user, uh, but for anybody down there, uh, you will likely be familiar with NetBank and how it works. Okay, so great, you've received some money from abroad and now it's sitting here, what, what do you do with it? How do you actually use it? Well, they have a whole bunch of different ways within the application that you can shop for the things that you may need. So we're gonna go to the shop tab down at the bottom. Let's just take a look at what is in front of us here. Now I'm gonna open the map in a moment, but I wanna focus first on the options below. So let's hit load and promos. And what this allows you to do is top up your mobile from the following providers. You basically select the provider, um, you choose the amount that you want, and then you put in your mobile number and you can also say save for next purchase, hit continue and you'll be topping yourself up there. Now, you also have options for transportation. So you can use Beep, Auto Sweep or Easy Trip and you can simply top that up with a whatever amount you want. So we'll hit Beep, it gives us options for amounts we want to top up. And then again, you put in your mobile number, your account number, and you can even save that for your next purchase as well if you want to use the same account. Uh, what about game credits? If we go in here, uh, there's a whole bunch. So if you play mobile games, if you play different games, there's all kinds of different options in here. My daughter happens to really enjoy Roblox and that is in here as well. So if I wanted to get Roblox credits, it says, okay, here's your different options. You select them and then it'll give you a voucher that you can redeem in game. And finally, this is the big one. You can pay most billers within the Philippines here. So if you hit pay bills, um, you can add favorites and reminders of when you'd like to pay your bills, but let's just hit search biller. You can manually search up top once the search box pops up, but look at the variety of stuff that you can actually pay here. There's a number of banks, you can pay off credit cards, you can pay utility bills, you can obviously top up other things, but there's there's no shortage of things that you can pay through this application. Um, even if I wanted to say, credit card uh it would say all right well here's uh, it, it'll start narrowing down selections for me okay um home credit philippines global west finance and credit corporation so you can you can basically narrow down what you're looking to pay for and you're likely going to find it in this list and and man is that ever useful so again i'll just uh, i'll click on one for as an example of what you're going to see you need a payment code you know for the biller uh, the amount you want and the account name and you hit continue and you can set up your payment and it'll go direct to them from the application so super useful in in order to basically actually utilize your balance here. Now, the last thing that I wanna to touch on is the map because in the Philippines, depending on where you are, uh, there may be a bunch of merchants that actually just accept Bitcoin directly. Um, and there is, uh, a place in the Philippines, one of the islands that uh, they're, they're calling Bitcoin Island now. And it actually has a ton of, of different uh, merchants and so if I zoom in here, check this out, it's wild. They've got like over 200 merchants uh, here in the Philippines and it's just all over the place. Uh, so this is in Boracay and, uh, and it, yeah. So anyways, if you're in Boracay, you can pretty much live on Bitcoin very, very easily, but you don't even need to in terms of living on Bitcoin itself. Uh, it's just kind of cool to know that the it's it's starting to proliferate. There are places outside, but they're working on building out the map to actually properly show where different services are that you can pay with Bitcoin. But there are others obviously in the Philippines that you can utilize and around the globe too. Okay, so we saw ways of spending uh, from the balance, but what about sending money somewhere, sending to a bank account, maybe your own bank account, maybe somebody else's. Well, let's take a look at that. If we simply go to the send button, it gives us some options. There are some uh, options for, for Bitcoin and we'll look at those in a second, but let's look at the practical stuff of, hey, I want this as a bank transfer. 
hit bank transfer, what's it gonna ask you for? It's gonna populate and basically ask for um, your bank account. So you have a whole bunch of different options in terms of what bank you may wanna to send to. It shows popular options up top. It's just gonna ask for the account name, account number, and the amount you're sending, continue, and it's very simple to send that through. There is also the option where it says remittance center here. And uh, you can actually remit through LBC, and I'm unfamiliar with this one, and the type is very small, but if you're in the Philippines, that may look familiar to you. But anyways, it asks the amount, the recipient's first, middle, and last name, and their phone number, and you can continue on, and it will remit to them through that means. So now let's look at what if you happen to know somebody, and they have a Bitcoin wallet, and they just like to receive Bitcoin from you or if you want to send to somebody else within within the app. So if I hit send, I can send via Lightning. And what it's going to do is it's first going to ask, hey, who would you like to send to? Are they a user of Pouch? And so I could send to any other Pouch user if I just know their username, which would be found in their settings under their profile. So mine, remember, was BTC sessions at pouch.ph. However, it does give you a drop down menu of other options that exist uh, that you can send, that you can actually send people payments to. Now, I happen to have also a GetAlbi account. Uh, and so I can tap on that and hit continue. And I can put in BTC sessions because that's my username over there. And I can hit continue. And it says, well, how much would you like to send? And it, it asked me in sats um, and it wants to know how much I want to send. So it says a million of a thousand sats um, and it, it does give you uh, roughly what that's going to be. But a thousand sats is about 30 US cents um, I'm, or about 15 pesos, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to hit continue. Okay, it'll populate the transaction and say, hey, you're sending, yeah, I was right, just shy of 16 pesos. Um, there's a small fee associated with it. I'm gonna hit confirm and it should send off, no problem. And actually, if I open up my wallet on my computer, and I'll just pull that up here one second. So here's my, uh, here's my account. I'm just gonna to go to incoming transactions and there's a thousand sats coming in a few seconds ago. So I can see that already arrived into my wallet there. Now we can also send via other means. So if somebody had created an invoice, so I'm gonna create an invoice for a thousand sats here in the app. I'm gonna bring that up. That'll create a QR code. And again, from the application in Pouch, I can simply hit the send button and choose via lightning and I'll zoom in on this. Now I don't have to actually input this information. I can just hit the little scan QR up in the top right. In fact, I don't even know, need to go to the send screen from the main wallet screen, that little square is there. And furthermore, if I hit send, I can also choose scan QR code there. So you can get to the same thing from all these different screens. The long and the short of it is open up your camera and scan the QR in front of you and it will fill the information. So I just scanned that QR that was on the screen of my computer and it fills the information and says, hey, they're requesting a thousand sats. That sounds good to me. Again, that's around 16 pesos. And off it goes and I can see over on my screen, there's my confetti as my payment was received. All right, now let's do one other version of that. And we're actually going to do this within the phone here. I'm gonna open up a wallet and I'm going to uh, create an invoice as well. And I'll do it again for about a, a thousand sats. Uh, but this time I'm going to copy the information. So that string of digits that I showed you before. And I'm going to paste that in in pouch. Now, how do you do that? You're gonna hit send via lightning but instead, uh, or actually even what's easier is open up your camera. It does give you an option down below that says paste. So it'll paste whatever's in your clipboard. And that again, fills all the information necessary. And I just slide to confirm and off it should go. If I navigate back to that other wallet, we can see that payment being received no problem. 
Now, in the same vein of sending to people that you're familiar with repeatedly, uh, if we actually go to our profile down at the bottom right and then into settings, it allows us to manage our contacts. And I can add a contact and basically the same format that we saw before, I could enter BTC sessions at getalby.com, add that as a contact, and then at any point I can easily send to that particular address. So if I go back out to my main screen, I choose send and I want to send via lightning. I can go to my contacts from there and select the one I want. It will fill that information for me and I can continue and input the amount that I would like to send just as I did before. In terms of final thoughts around Pouch, I think it's a very useful application for people to be able to send payments home uh, from abroad from anywhere instantly with next to no fees. Um, I also really like the all of the integrations to be able to then use those funds without jumping through hoops. You can actually just use them natively in the app or if you choose, you can of course send to your own bank account. Um, I'm seeing more applications pop up like this in various uh, jurisdictions. I mentioned one off the top of the show called Neutron Pay, which is focusing in and around Vietnam. But I think you're going to get more um, companies that focus in on certain locales where they say, okay, we're gonna set up the, the ground infrastructure of being able to use our service and use Bitcoin and, and do all of these things here. And then we're gonna plug into this global payment network that is Bitcoin. And um, I think that's a fantastic thing. Now, some things I'd love to see out of Pouch in the future is the ability to more easily tell how many or how much Bitcoin you're sending versus how many pesos and, and see the differentiation, maybe toggle between what you have and what you're pegged to and maybe giving you the option to hold your money in Bitcoin as opposed to have it pegged to pesos for those that wish to actually keep Bitcoin specifically um, because the value of Bitcoin obviously can go up and down. And uh, in the the pouch app, the second you receive via Bitcoin, it turns into pesos and it will stay at that constant value. But some people may choose to save in Bitcoin. And so it'd be kind of cool if you could say, oh, I want to put a percentage of my balance and have it stay in Bitcoin so that if it goes up in value, then I can keep it. Um, right now, the only option to do that would be to send it out of pouch into a Bitcoin Lightning wallet that you have on your phone as well. So it is a possibility, but it would be cool to see that within the app. Now, the other thing I want to note here is, of course, uh, you know, you, this is a service. You're signing up for it. There is requires ID. Think of this more like a bank account that gives you some benefits because you're using the Bitcoin network. You, all the fun, funds here are managed by the people managing Pouch. Uh, and so they're not directly in your own self custody. Again, it's much like a bank account. Uh, you're you're putting a degree of trust in the people that are using Pouch. Of course, you can withdraw to your own bank account if you're uncomfortable with that, or you can withdraw to a, an outside Lightning wallet like the one I showed, Phoenix. You can withdraw to that wallet if you so choose. Um, and so it's just important to kind of know the difference between, oh, in this app, I'm, you know, it, somebody's managing my money for me versus in this app, I have full control of it myself. So if you're looking to dive into that, if you're relatively new to Bitcoin, then you can kind of uh, take a look at that Phoenix wallet tutorial. And that is a wallet in which you are in full control of your funds and there's no trust in a, a third party. Um, outside of that, I, I think, again, the developments around this are great. I can't wait to see more. And uh and the optionality is fantastic. Uh, we'll, we'll see what comes of this in various locales around the world. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do like, subscribe, share. All those things help a ton getting this content in front of more eyeballs. If you want to help the show in another way, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors in the show notes down below. You can also head over to my website, btcsessions.ca, where you'll find a ton of info. But if you need a little bit more hand-holding and helping through the process of understanding Bitcoin in any way, shape, or form, you can book me there for private sessions, one-on-ones online. Uh, and you can also check 
out if I have any upcoming in-person workshops in your city. And finally, if you really liked what you saw, you can scroll down just a little bit and you'll see a donation address where you can send tips via the Lightning Network uh, directly to me. You can also click that link and it'll open up my Geyser Fund page in which, again, you can send sats over there. And thank you to everybody that, uh, that does that once in a while. It's always cool to see sats streaming in from people that have appreciated the content. With that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening wherever you may be. I'll see you guys next time for your daily session. Hold all the Bitcoin.